today we have a presentation by Kuhn, and everyone is going to say so what it is, and the calibration analysis. Uh, we have a good to have the guys who also work on the calibration for the property of the So it's yours. Thank you, Ataki. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, yeah, a little bit nervous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I introduce myself. My name is uh, Foucault. Uh, I just uh, finished my PhD in agricultural economics at the uh, UWA School of Agriculture and Environment. Uh, today, I would like to share my research is done on uh, meta regression analysis of uh, technical efficiency measurement in uh, my family. This is a chapter of my PhD thesis, uh, supported by Michael Burton, Chumoma, and Takaki Handu. Um, this paper we uh, submitted to the Journal of Agriculture and Economics, and um, we are revising and we submit by the end of the year. So today, uh, I hope to get some comments or any suggestions to finalize the problem we sent to the journal. I forgot to turn on this camera. How do you turn this on? <laughs> okay. Okay, so, just use the keyboard. Yeah. Um let to start with the um my trials, why we study meta depression analysis in technical efficiency for farming. So we talked about the uh, important uh, roles of rice farming around the world. As you may know, that rice is a staple crop that uh, contributes significantly to uh, global food security and uh, economic development, especially in uh, underdeveloped and developing countries, which depend on the agriculture sector. Uh, I think to the um, statistics from FAOs, um, in 2018, this sector supplied around 780 uh, million tons of cattle. That is a principal food source for more than 3.5 billion people around the world. Um, however, um, also, uh, FAO shows that um, currently around 800 million people still face with the uh, chronic uh, hunger and around 2. Million people suffer for the uh, micronutrition deficiency. Food shortages are partly due to the um, yield gap and production constraint and the uh, uneven distribution of agricultural agricultural land among country, regions, and continents. This table shows that um, as you can see the uh, rice production is mainly distributed in the Asian country where account for 87% of the uh, area and contribute to uh, up to 90% of total rice production around the world. The small remaining area distributed in Africa, in America, Europe, or Australia, just a very small proportion of the uh, rice farming. And as a, um, here, you also see that has a yield gap between the continents. And, um, and Africa has quite low right yield compared to the average um, around the world. And this finger uh, so more detail for the right yield gap between the country. And this is the hectare, uh, the, the area in million hectare in low scale. And this is right yield. And uh, these are uh, countries so uh, 
this country is like uh, the right main right producer around the world in Asia. As you see, the India, China, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Philippines, and Thailand are the leading right producer, but they still have it different in use. So this raises the question: This is the motivation for agricultural economy. Uh, they focus. Um, on technical efficiency measurement to find out the solution whether uh, can help the farmer uh, improve the technical efficiency to in, uh, close the deal gap and increase the outcome to meet the global push uh, demand. And however, the, uh, when we search the literature, we see that the, the main technical efficiency estimate in the empirical study that very significantly between study and within study. And this finger, is, we collect the data from the literature. And you can see that uh, the mean technical efficiency is quite, has a wide range variation from 0 0.4 up to 1. Here, we already dropped a line. Some studies that just report technical efficiency, mean technical efficiency is under like 0 0.2 something. So this raise a question whether the mean technical efficiency estimate were affected by study characteristics, like for example, uh, different studies using different estimation methods, whether they affect the estimate or not, or the uh, research design like was functional form specification like custom return to scale versus is the return to scale or functional form, or another is uh, like the efficiency estimate <clears throat> conducted in different region countries will affect the as a different uh, estimate or not. So that's why we conduct a meta regression. The first purpose is to uh, statically uh, synthesize this uh, empirical LTE estimate to see the overall picture of technical efficiency performance in rice farming around the world that may provide some implication for the food security strategy. And the second purpose is we evaluate the effects of the study characteristic line or study heterogeneity, application match, or a heterogeneity issue on MTE estimate. The research approach uh, for the uh, meta regression model uh, is uh, we need to read three issues that is the, the first we check the publication bias where the whether there has a publication bias in MTE estimate or not. What is the publication bias? Publication bias is like researcher, reviewer, editor, and tutorial prefer the significant results. So if the result not significant, say the sim doesn't accept. So to check the publication bias, the simplest way is we using the panel plot. But if the uh, that is a just scatter uh, plot uh, of the uh, if I say uh, again the uh, the precision of the uh, estimates, but some uh, if the panel plot is asymmetry, it shows the presence of publication bias. In, but that may not be liable because some uh, other reason we may not know. So the second way is we need to using statistical test like uh, uh, Edgar and Maple test. Uh, Molly has you can look at the uh, my paper in the thesis or the so to run uh, Edgar is a regression big test and back here is a rank correlation test. For the regression test, we just run uh, with the dependent variable is the mean technical efficiency report on the uh, primary study, we search from the literature. And on the right hand side, it uh, includes the precision of the MTE estimate. On the literature, there are several ways they use, like they, some studies they using the standard deviation of efficiency distribution. Some studies are using the 
inverse square root of the same sign to calculate the proper Poisson bias. Um, in our study, we using the inverse square root of the same sign. Why? Because uh, back in early 1980, it, it gives that uh, public Poisson bias is proportional to the um, the inverse square root of the same sign. So uh, yeah. So the uh, we we using the other study line they using standard deviation, but we think that that is not appropriate to capture a uh, standard deviation and not appropriate uh, indicator to capture the uh, precision of uh, MTE estimates. The second is we account for the heterogeneity as I mentioned before, that is a study characteristic. Like they come, uh, heterogeneity is like uh, this is a uh, uh, methodological count like the different estimation methods functional form specification, data size, like cross-signal cross or the panel, something like that. And factor like uh, some different regions in Africa, South Asian, West Asian, maybe they report the efficiency um, different due to the region. So we just in the model one, we just add the, um, here as this uh, the moderator or the covariate to capture the study. Uh, However, the uh, aerosol here may suffer to the uh, heterosynthetic issue because the variant in the uh, MTE estimate change with the single sign, the number of observations. So uh, to address that, we just divide uh, weighted at the both side by the uh, inverse square root of the single sign. So we come with the uh, model three. Uh, for estimation methods, um, we search all the literature uh, for the meta regression analysis in uh, technical uh, in efficiency. Uh, we have uh, see that um, they using uh, ordinary least square uh, to each model, uh, fractional regression model, uh, weighted least square, and recently they did random effect meta regression with the maximum value estimation methods. So in our study, we tried to estimate on the model to uh, check the reliability of our estimates. The data we do we did this search from the online database and published uh, website. We did two times. The third time I because it, it, I did in uh, the first year of my PhD uh, program in 2017. But then we, we, sent, uh, we sent to the journal reviewer required me to update the data. So we update on uh, 30, uh, May 2021. We uh, searched using the keyword like technical efficiency, technical inefficiency, right, and credit economy. We found that uh, 721 study, and then we uh, clean the data. The first, we check the WK study follow the uh, from 2016, and then we check the address, um, the title, and and public work whether they meet the requirement uh, in our study or not. And in our study, we include the thesis uh, conference paper that is not public author. Sure. And then uh, also follow the uh, command from the reviewer. We check the predator journal and publishers using the BIOLIC uh, website. And then we check the paper content, whether the papers they report enough uh, information we give in the, the model. Is the papers they don't provide enough information to the custom. And the last one, we check and drop the outline. Uh, so the final uh, simple sign consists of 175 study with 443 observations. Uh, uh, we quote the data and uh, this is a summary. For the data, we have a variable like simple sign z of the study is the z of the data z in the primary study. We want we include that because we want to see whether it has a technical chain on the time. And number is the input variable used in the production function. 
data, panel data, uh, first of all, the process you know, whether they have or can be estimated or not. Secondary data compared to the uh, primary data source. And values data compared to the physical, like subsidiary, they're using the values uh, data sets. The subsidiary, they're using the quantity. So we want to see whether they also have other methods, specification, and functional form. We, we have um, DA methods, we have orientation like input and output orientation, and we have return to scale, have uh, constant return to scale versus um, variable return to scale. And in the parametric approach uh, FFA, we have functional form like copula or tensor functional form. So based on our data set, we have um, six categories. So we have, reducing the bed k is the DA output orientation constant return to scale and we run this way uh, also based on the uh, uh, reviewer comment before this is getting so, so a little bit different with the uh, version of my thesis. And the, uh, to catch the recent, re, uh, recent effect, we category to the Southeast Asia, uh, East Asia, South Asia, West and Middle Asia, um, West Africa, East and Middle Africa, and we just in the um, uh, Southeast Asia as a big one. So the um, overall uh, uh, mean technical efficiency in red farming around the world is around 0 0.757. Here is your result, and uh, we check the publication map. And here, uh, this is the final uh, plot. Uh, this is the uh, MTE estimate score, and this is the precision of the inverse uh, uh, square root of the single sign. And this seems to have uh, publication bias because some observation lie out uh, outside the confidence interval. But and as I said before, it will not be liable to look at the final plot. We just have an initial look, but we, to make sure that we need to do the test, statistical test. So the aggregate test shows that seem to have publication bias, but not strong evidence because just around uh, 10%. And the back test, it doesn't show any evidence. So, to have the more precise, we run the full model because we that may be due to the heterogeneity rather than publication bias. So the results show that this is estimate upon the data regression model. Um, look at this. This is a parameter to get the publication bias. It seems to appear in the OLS topic of fractional regression. A little bit more fractional regression model. It has several uh, uh, specifications like how to log, uh, log profits, log log, C log log. So we need, when we run regression model, fractional regression, uh, we need to test to select the appropriate specification. In order to say we just retake the county specification, but we can choose the uh, log profit, uh, log log, or C log log specification. In our study, uh, here, I just uh, present the profit uh, specification. So the result is quite consistent across the model. And by choosing the uh, publication bias issue, it seems that it appear in the random regression model as well. So we confirm that we don't find any strong, uh, we don't have strong evidence to show the presence of publication bias in any estimate. And here to explain uh, the results, uh, this, uh, the baseline is DA uh, output or at the constant return to scale. So this confirms that uh, variable return to scale, it produces higher MT estimate compared to the constant return to scale. This result is on constant with the um, theoretical security. Uh, for DA, Inputs oriented constant return to scale compared to the baseline. We just compare the input and outputs, no significant. 
So it means that the orientation doesn't have different for the and um, yeah, this is due to the variant in terms of scale, as you know. And here we compare the FFA output oriented variable with terms of scale and with the uh, popular functional form. We com compare to these, the coefficient is quite close. So it, uh, this means that this effect is only due to the variable with terms of scale, not uh, don't have effect uh, the parameter versus uh, non parameter doesn't have effect on, uh, I mean, the, the estimation method doesn't have effect on this is this goal. And when we compare the uh, functional form between Coplan and Traslo, the coefficient is not much different. This means that the functional form doesn't have effect on MPD estimation. In our data set. But we find a strong evidence of um, data twice because on MCD estimate. As you can see, that panel data, uh, secondary data, and value data produce lower efficiency score compared to the cross sectional data, uh, primary data source, and physical data. And we also found the uh, strong evidence of uh, regional effects on MTD estimate. Where the, compared to the Southeast Asian, uh, the East Asian and South Asian country report efficiency score higher, but the Africa country uh, report lower efficiency level compared to the Southeast Asian. This table summary the uh, observed and predicted MPD score from the model. As you can see that they are not much different efficiency score uh, as a mean level, but they have the difference in the uh, variation rate. So there seem to be um, the predicted value have narrows variation, narrow variation rate compared to the observed. Um, uh, efficiency score report on service process. This is, uh, uh, yeah, this is because the uh, uh, heterogeneity, study heterogeneity we captured in the model that is different data type, reason. Yeah. See the correlation, we saw that, um, yeah, the predicted uh, MPE estimate from the empirical model require high correlation, confirm the robustness of consistent result between the model. But they have the low um, uh, correlation compared to the uh, uh, observed uh, MTD estimate on the uh, literature. This so is the uh, scatter plot, so the correlation. And here we just saw the um, MTD estimate report on the literature. And the uh, MTA estimate using the uh, maximum uh, line meta regression model. That's the random effect model. So we see that predictive value have layers more precise. Uh, we come to some conclusion. The first, the estimates are quite consistent across the model and uh, confirm it, that confirms the robustness of our estimate. Except for the water is where uh, maybe that due to the treatment uh, difference between the for the line they because water is where they have the different way to treat the uh, between study and the ocean. The, the research finds strong evidence on the effect of study characteristics on MTE estimates. First is variable return to scale specification for the higher efficiency score compared to the constant return to scale. Uh, panel data, uh, secondary data, and value data have generate lower uh, MTD estimates uh, than processional uh, primary data and physical data practically. Compared to the Southeast Asian country, 
the East Asian South Asian country have higher MTE estimates, while the Africa countries have lower MTE estimates compared to the uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, we don't find strong evidence of publication by foreign entity estimates. Uh, Based on the, uh, our finding, we have some different questions. First, for practitioners, they should carefully consider and justify the approach and the data trying to exist before uh, uh, running the model or uh, explaining the results. For the policymaker or artist user of efficiency estimates, they must be cautious uh, when interpreting and applying empirical results to develop the policy or pursue other objectives. The, the estimated mean of uh, MTE estimate is around zero point around seventy six percent, suggesting uh, the potential to improve the technical efficiency in rice farming around the world, and the need for further research and development. Uh, to build a national agility gap in the army to increase the outcome to meet the global food security goal. Uh, one more important thing is we uh, want to get your comment is that um, what should there be publication by the in MTE estimates? And if is a better way to capture the publication bias rather than standard deviation of efficiency distribution or the first method of simulation. Because currently I work uh, with another study based on this to find out what is the best way to measure publication bias in the efficiency literature because we did not find any appropriate way to do that. So, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of good things. I think uh, this can spark a lot of effects of people doing action analysis. So see something more beforehand why you might get certain things. So the floor is open for questions. Okay. I wouldn't expect it to be publication bias with efficiency measures because the values pretty well always between the five and one. So if you, do a, if, you look at, if you look at a paper, you know, you, it's always going to be between 45. Publication bias arises when you have uh, studies that are not published because they've got the wrong side. Yeah. That's not the issue with publication bias with uh, technical efficiency. So that's, um, so yeah, so that's just a comment. Just on that. There was a paper recently on cost and production that was rejected just because the uh, estimates were too low. So it can happen. So if someone gives you a paper where they say the, uh, the efficiency level is between 20% and 60%, or even between 20% and 100%, but there's a good proportion that's below 40, uh, that becomes a problem. And in here, because people will still have conceptions about what's acceptable efficiency. So, if it's right skill, it's going to be rejected. We know that it's supposed to be left skill, and the level has to be set. So, uh, maybe on you know, we need to go a bit up here. So, um, it might hurt, but it can, it can happen. Also, most, most papers will be on the right side, so we let it happen sometimes. But how we define bias is important, yeah. Yeah, because how do you, uh, I think that's one thing that's very different from the standard bias stuff. So these yeah. are just estimates. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's why I think who is looking for a reaction now. Uh, yeah. Tell me. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple of because I'm trying to put my head around me. Some of these studies that the real experts have done. So uh, let me first of all clarify in the right hand side, MTE, what is that? That's the mean technical efficiency, maybe what is the mean technical efficiency? Yes, let's okay. 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 So the, the problem I normally see sometimes with the way this thing is done is. Uh, we need to go back on 
conceptually can understand what we are doing. So uh, you have shown a very good uh, uh, statistics there. But if you look at Asia, you look at Africa, you look at uh, Oceania, you see the difference in terms of uh, mean, okay, of the years. Okay, but here you're not measuring years, you're measuring the coefficient. So if you take countries in Africa and you estimate uh, what is the technical efficiency, let's say you get a technical efficiency of uh, 0 0.7, okay? If you take those countries in, in, in Africa and you measure their level of technical efficiency relative to the frontier for Asia, what do you expect to get? Much more given what you see, okay? Yeah. And if you do for Asia, it's going to be different, okay? If you take the countries uh, in, in Oceania and you use the frontier for Africa, what do you expect? All of them are going to be efficient, okay? So it brings me then to the point that uh, so when we are trying then to get the mean and we're trying to with estimate mapping all these countries together, what really are we trying to figure out? Because these are relative, if you measure them using DA, the understanding is that you should just know that these are just relative measures. Okay. So in your case, I see you have combined, you have SFA and you also have DA. But we know structurally the estimates that you get from SFA. At least they have teased out the measurement error. Okay. In DEA, we have not been, uh, been able to tease out that measurement error. So the first question is that why do you make the error lump those two things together? Why not separate the studies for DEA and SFA? Because I'm just trying to have a problem with the interpretation of when I look at the parameters that you have and, uh, and the interpretation of that. What, what is it really telling me? So if I look at, for instance, constant return to scale, you see variable return to scale, you see that uh, it's always going to be high. Okay. That is just an artifact of uh, the technology that they, 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 they are, the assumption when you estimate those measures of technical efficiency, you definitely expect that uh, the variable return to scale measures, if you compare them relative to constant return to scale, they're going to be high. Okay, so the, then it takes me to the question, when you are doing this, what are the real variables that you should be putting in your model if you have to do this? Because some of the variables like I put today, whether it's constant time to scale, that is just really will tell us this is what we should, we should expect. Yeah, so I still struggle when I look at this, I still struggle then to interpret these parameters to say, are these parameters giving me any new information that I could not deduce just from theory, uh, just a prior, even without estimating the depression, I would have known that this is what they have to expect. I know I've seen publications, I've seen people publish these papers, I think there are some few meta regression studies out there, but personally, when I statistically think about what these models are today, I, I sometimes I struggle to really interpret and say, well, what are we really trying to tease out? What, 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 what is that really telling us? Uh, thank you for the answer. I know I think that um, because it's study using the different um, uh, History report uh, the estimate, the mean technical efficiency, and they may be using different functional form or estimate methods, so that we know that on the research that is that um, different method, functional form or specification, constant return to scale or uh, orientation key for the different estimates. So when they report on the literature, uh, they must um, and they that's the why variation. So we try to uh, capture these variations. Yeah, of course, the, we know already the, the effect of either the approach on the literature, but we want to see that whether they appear in the okay. 
here when we uh, we uh, based on that we want to do some uh, uh, libraries on the literature and empirical or uh, meta discussion we want to do some counseling for the uh, practical like the new uh, efficiency uh, researchers they need to be aware of the these effects before they choose into the method that uh, specification. But how do they just need to understand production? Do you, all they need to just know is uh, understand exactly what they are doing, understand what production theory is talking about this specimen. If you look like the disparities across countries, really the data that you showed us, you know like what you're showing, estimates from Africa, they will always be low. So a priori, you would expect that that is what you would get. So I'm tr trying to struggle as a policy maker, convince me then uh, what is this new insight that I did not have that I'm getting from the later frontier. I, I, I have my way. hand in this as a cost supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I better do help with the, uh, defending it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think at one of the conferences in uh, Sydney or something, Julian asked and we were having beer after the conference and he said something that I thought was a bit outrageous. He said, the whole purpose of agricultural economics is to measure things. <laughs> you just measure and uh, I said, that's not the whole purpose. So we do more and more than that. But in a way he's right. So there are three things. One is, as Amin said, it's true. Theoretically, there are things that we expect. So if a student comes running to you, oh, I estimated a constant in terms to scale uh, and a variable in terms to scale technology, and the variable in terms to scale technology gave me a higher uh, set of efficient estimates, theoretically, you know, that's what's going to happen. So that's not surprising. Okay. Uh, it's true what he said, I mean, but at the same time, the theory tells you the direction, but it doesn't tell you how big it is. And that's left the ethical. So, are you going to get a difference of uh, one percent, which is insignificant economy of any percent, any sense, or are you going to get twenty percent, or are you going to get thirty percent? You say DA because it doesn't allow for noise. At least all deviation to the efficiency, it's all else being the same, it's going to tend to give you lower efficiency estimates. We know that, but how long? Now, when you look in there, what you see is actually for this set, and there are some, some things that are missing because you don't, you don't have a, uh, a non DLX so far to point here that's also constant returns to scale. So not, not enough economics physics, maybe other economists who are more careful doing this research. Uh, they don't like constant returns to scale. So we don't have this. But what that's telling you is the functional form on its own makes a slight difference, like a sort of between 7.3 and 8. It's small, but it's as you said. So, uh, to come back to the thing, yes, your theory does tell you, but it doesn't tell you the direction. And in terms of comparing across countries, because I, I, didn't, I, I was not thinking about this in detail at, uh, until uh, it was present here, uh, you do see okay, how much is the difference between West Africa and Asia? You still need to know. You know that Africa has lower, maybe has lower elections. Efficiency level. In fact, you don't know that Africa has lower efficiency level. You know that Africa has lower productivity. But we don't know that African farmers have less efficient than Asian farmers until we do the research. Because this is not about it, it's about relative to their fields, which is Africans against African farmers, how, how efficient they are. And what this is telling us is we have even more problems in Africa because it's not just they are less yield, they are actually uh, less efficient. Uh, so th there are those things you need. You still, you still need to know how big it is. And in fact, it breaks things down for you. Uh, and and uh, most of the things are consistent with what you expect, but you need to know how, how big are the differences. And that by itself is important on top of doing meta regression for its own sake. <laughs> 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 What's the value? So what are known is that uh, one point one. What is the value? I'm just thinking as a policy maker or somebody who is trying to give information, maybe to tell people how we improve the efficiency or what. 
what is this? But of course, it still remains a relative measure. Because, yeah, despite what we have there, it still remains a relative measure. And you can still go ahead and tease out so many things. So if you look at the stochastic frontier, so with your control for all those things, there are different uh, orientations. But have we done the same for stochastic frontiers? Because most of the studies, maybe they'll just estimate using an output orientation. They normally don't estimate these things using an input orientation. So okay. one question for you, Amin. Yes. <laughs> Would you have expected the, the, the estimates from the Cobb-Douglas and the transfer to be the same? Uh, or would you have expected the terms to be I don't higher expect them, I don't expect them to be the same. And by virtue like that, it gives me that that is just purely a statistical coincidence. Because theory would tell me, I know that already the Cobb Douglas is just restricted. You have forced that to just assume a constant standard scale. Whereas my variable, my, my uh, translog may take a, a, a different form. Yeah. So that's why then I have a problem in the first place. Why you are putting SFA studies and combining them with the DEA? If you have separated them, maybe I can start to understand. It. So I conceptually, I still have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. I think we can we can discuss this further. But for okay, yeah, yeah, the, continue the, that afterwards, please. Things. And seeing this actually saves them a lot of effort because. They don't have to spend months talking about. Before we come back here, can you answer the question from uh, Ram? In fact, I, I have also a similar question. When you go to your data table. Yeah, okay. uh, if needed, I can elaborate that. I'm a little bit confused here. I hope it's a uh, huh? direct and straightforward question. Ram, are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think Ram, Ram had a question about this. How do you degenerate those numbers? Why don't why don't the regional values add up to one? Any, any observation is going to be in one of these, for example. Um, okay, can that I elaborate on question, question or something else? Oh no no, it's about this uh, dummy variable. But uh, I would I think uh, how he is created is at least to me it looks fine. But it, I would like to see the descriptive statistics table. That's where I'm a little confused. If we go to the table. Um, wh where the table is? Oh, okay, so, sorry, give me a second. I might be doing something. Yeah, yes, question. yes, yes. Ah, sorry. I, I have uh, just. Um, I think. Here here line that. Here uh, my question need... is, for example, is, is it okay for me to go? Uh, could Could you speak again, Ram? Sorry, we didn't hear it. Okay. Uh, is it? Uh, can you hear me? We. I can hear you. Can hear you? Okay. My question is about this uh, region dummy where you have 443 observations and you are creating these region dummies, considering that I hope this, if the study is coming from Southeast Asia, that particular observation will get one and the others will get zero, even though you created it as a standard. Okay. Let's look at the uh, Western Middle Asia. If the study is coming from that region, it gets one, otherwise zero. But when I come here, your number of observation is just seven. My, my understanding is there are only seven studies coming from Western Middle Asia. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. The, the N is the number of observations. So if here, if we have, uh, for example, Southeast Asia. And then, uh, yeah, and then where yeah. are the zeros then? Why, why, where are those zeros? Zeros means out of 443, seven studies yeah, yeah. gets one. Yeah, and yeah. then rest gets zero, right? Yes. And then what does yeah. this mean mean telling us? Mean is the mean of MTE estimate. Oh. This mean, mean is uh, the mean of what? Uh, mean technical efficiency estimate. The different variable. So here is the, uh, sorry, I did not make uh, the clear. For this is the mean of the, uh, uh, this, this is a variable, but from the Variable come down to here is a mean of a mean technical efficiency score they report in the empirical study. My question there is, I think if uh, if I'm looking at, I would see that this is the mean, or maybe seven over whatever, four hundred forty-three or something. That's the that's the value here, isn't it? 
And I'm a little confused when you report this here as a mean of the MTE or whatever. Is that the normal way of doing it? I'm a little confused here on the descriptive part. So that's why my question is. Okay. Normally, you put the mean of the dummy. Mean of the variable. That's what it should be. In my view, it should be the mean of the variable. So in this case, 7 over 443 should be this value somewhere here. And then whatever the standard deviation would be. It's actually giving something more useful because it's giving the regional average for yeah. technical efficiency. So really ideally, right. ideally yeah. these main figures here should add up to one if it is a region dummy. So they will get their proportionate distribution in terms of that. That's how I would think, but I could be maybe understanding it differently. So the, the first three numbers are what you would expect, but all the rest are TE. I think that causes a confusion when you start with 550 up there. Yeah. The first idea is before I illustrate the table is the summary efficiency by covariance by equal one and the other variable is how much is that? But here I just uh, simplify and uh, from the thesis uh, examiner they ask uh, at this variable. So for this is a continuous. So we don't have the mean of technical efficiency. If we put, we will put overall here to be consistent, but uh, yeah. They just in the average values um, for each study compared to the observation which if you go back to the color code, I'm not sure. So so okay. So if we just in the average value, can it because the effect of the 
So it means that you need to average the same size, but it doesn't seem to be a head problem. Right? Because if F estimate uh, if observation in this study, they may estimate different simple size. But why is this useful? Is it telling you anything anyway? Because what was we supposed to happen here? Typically, what's what's the supposed to show? Uh, uh, if the uh, uh, FE score mm. under the cement distribution yeah. and under the panel, yeah. it means that no publication might appear. But here we see that um, some uh, estimates are right outside the uh, confidence interval, and since we appear some study here. So see, not strong. But so we said the sample size is a good way of capturing some. Uh, uh, and we, as I mentioned, that we on the literature is not clear which is the best one. Some study they using standard deviation of efficiency distribution. Some they say the inverse squares. So I want to hear which one is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> my, my knowledge of the information is limited to this, but my understanding is the publication that is about the precision of the estimate. So if, if you do elasticity of demand, for example, mm. and if you get a good estimate, precise estimate, which is likely to be significant, mm. and, and the, it's going to be significant, likely to be significant if your sample size is bigger. And then you are more likely to present it for publication and it to be accessed. So the papers that tend to be published will tend to be ones that have uh, precise estimates and so on. When you come to the technical efficiency, that is maybe one and we have just a bunch of numbers. And we had a discussion when we had some uh, ideas for how we would reject the paper. Okay? We are not going to reject it based on uh, the efficiency estimate position. It's, as Ben said before, it might be about you look at the distribution. If it doesn't make sense, you are going to reject it. But in most cases, it's likely to make sense. So you are going to accept it. So in that sense, what the publication does, as a reviewer, what do you use to, to be biased against the data? And, and of course, different people could come with different uh, ideas. So for example, me, if you ask me, as I said, uh, when I was responding uh, before, there was a paper on cotton production. And it came, it was written, it was clearly written by people who don't do efficiency because you can tell because they are giving you efficiency estimates that are in the 20%, 30%, 40%. A person who does efficiency would never do that. But they might have a point when they have to do something. They did it, and the paper was rejected. Which means as a review as possible, it was good. But the thing is, that would be my publication bad because when I see it, I don't care what it is because this cannot be efficient. But there is something wrong. Either there is something wrong in the data or something wrong in what they did. But if you look at the research, where are you going to get the average efficiency? The average efficiency is going to be in the 60%, 70%, sometimes in like in Houston, the 80%. If you get the average action in the 90%, the researcher will be worried because it's not it's not common. If it's in the 40%, the researcher will be worried. So my, my idea of publication bias would be something that has to do with the distribution and also because people are picky with the method. So if if you if you give them a single stage estimation, uh, they will get it now because they don't consider that to be a cutting edge. So it looks like there is more work to do on what, what, how bad should be. Uh, efficiency can't go above one. So why do the confidence intervals extend beyond one? <laughs> why do you have one? I mean, so, so that, that horizontal axis should stop at one. Yeah. <laughs> 
and the confidence interval should also stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we are also the quite tricky for tricky for the EPP area because this method they are represent the belong of the check for the competition. Okay. So when we have the efficiency study, the dependent variable is about the efficiency of the line. So have some. Might be just the way the software is working. Just no, the no, line no, is no. just extended too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chop, chop, chop the line. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, Uh, it was good.